Okay. Hello, everyone. And welcome to today's webinar. Highlights from the 2021 Emerald AUC School of Business Case Writing Competition. My name is uh, Nadine Salah. I'm the new marketing uh, manager for the MENA Pakistan and Turkey at Emerald Publishing. In our session today, we will be going through the highlights from 2021's competition uh, and hear from three of our winners from last year's competition. And finally, we are going to officially launch the Emerald AUC School of Business Case Writing Competition for the year of 2022. But first, I just want to start with a couple of housekeeping items. This webinar is going to be recorded and will be sent to the emails you registered with following the session. Please feel free to uh, share this with your colleagues. Uh, the session should be one hour. If you want to ask questions as we go, please feel free to put those in the question panel, which you will find on the right hand side of your screen in the GoToWebinar viewer. We will have time to answer your questions at the end. But very quickly before we begin, can I ask you uh, for each one of you to pop in the chat box where you are joining us from today? Uh, it's nice to see where everyone is joining from around the world. And our panelists today are talking to you from Egypt, UAE, and UK. And on that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest speakers for today, uh, Inji Magdi who is the director at the Al Khazandar Business Research and Case Center at the American University in Cairo School of Business. Uh, Shireen El Boweiti, who is a senior specialist at the Al Khazandar Business Research and Case Center at the American University in Cairo. Inji and Shireen has been our partners in conducting the competition for the last years and bringing in their knowledge and experience giving also that the KCC at the AUC is one of the leading centers for case writing uh, in the MENA region. And uh, Virginia, who is the said T. Khouri Chair of Leadership Studies and Professor at the School of Business Administration at the American University of Sharjah in the UAE. She has been the judge for the 2021's competition and she has also been the host for the trainings and the webinars for the competition. And finally, we will have James Hobbs, who is the commissioning lead for cases at Emerald Publishing. And I'm now going to hand over to Inji. Hello, everyone. Uh, it gives us great pleasure that we are welcoming you to this webinar, where we'll be announcing the winners of the 2021 case writing competition that we have launched in partnership with Emerald, uh, and also will be officially launching the upcoming year's competition. Um, it, it really gives us pleasure that we are collaborating with Emerald in such a great initiative uh, because in Hazendar Case Center at the American University in Cairo at the School of Business, we are extremely focused on fostering the culture of case studies, uh, being a very strong experiential learning tool. Uh, and we also encourage having cases from the region that represent the region and uh, makes greater impact and relation to whoever is using the cases. So please um, join me in welcoming uh, Dr. Virginia, who will be reflecting on the cases that she got the chance to judge in past year. She would be reflecting on the main points, what makes a case a winning case, uh, why the top three cases were selected as the top three. And we hope that in the upcoming years, competition will be receiving much more submissions from you and will be definitely uh, acknowledging these publications. So, Dr. Virginia, would you please um, share with us? Yes, hello, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you perfectly fine. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you very much for such an exciting initiative. I continue to be a very passionate person about case studies. I do publish myself those case studies, I write them a lot, and I'm always so excited to be part of this initiative. So Emerald, together with KCC, 
for a long time already, for several editions, had partnered in order to stimulate uh, students, professors, researchers to conduct uh, case studies and definitely to participate in such amazing competitions in order to boost the capacity of case writing, but also to stimulate a very engaging discussion in the classroom. So needless to say, cases are so relevant for today's business world and not only business world, looking at different facets of macroeconomic, macro social, macro uh, technological society, we see how important it is to actually bring this tangible knowledge, which happens in the external environment, in some different industrial environments to the classroom. So cases are really relevant, are uh, very lively, they allow to link theory to practice, they allow to make a classroom very lively, engaging and very dynamic. So students today more and more they become bored of traditional um, theory driven types of lectures and cases permit students to become the real protagonists right in the in the classroom and this uh, really flips the classroom from being um, instructor led to student-led, where students become real protagonists of the situations that happen in the external world, and then they enact those actions that are being embedded in those uh, specific societal settings in order to then propose some solutions to real problems that are being identified. So needless to say, the importance of case studies today is really, really big. Um, they also involve, involve a lot of stakeholders, right? Students are the most important stakeholders for us faculty when we teach um, different theories. And those case studies allow us to actually show how the theories apply in practice. Of course, uh, faculty themselves are uh, the important creators of this new knowledge um, through the case studies that are linking theory to practice and is being conveyed that knowledge into their uh, classroom. And of course, uh, the reviewers, the different um, judges involved in competition, publishers, because the ultimate purpose, of course, for every single case study is to be um, contributing to the dissemination of knowledge. And how would you disseminate the knowledge? By making others to get access to that knowledge. Uh, so, to have your case study published. Um, what is very interesting about this edition in particular, because there were several editions um, uh, of KCC to partner with Emerald and then to, uh, to have those case writing competitions, and we've seen those in the past, uh, they, they've been run uh, very successfully so far. But what was different for this edition of 2021 case writing competition in partnership between KCC and Emerald is that um, uh, we run three different webinars in order to boost the quality of the submitted cases, in order to make sure that um, really the guiding submission principles of uh, what makes a good case study successful are complied with. It. And of course, we looked at different aspects related to how to write a very good case study and how to boost the capacity of particularly people based in the in Middle Eastern region um, to, to write those case studies and to convey that practical knowledge um, into, into the classroom. So we had three webinars. Uh, the first webinar uh, was focused particularly on how to write engaging and relevant case studies. So we went through the entire um, um, aspect uh, of the case study, um, really decorticating the case study in different parts and different components, and even articulating the key success formulas for a case study to achieve um, the learning objectives identified for that specific case. Uh, the second webinar, um, was focused on how to write a comprehensive teaching note because from the experience we have seen that uh, many times um, the teaching note itself uh, creates uh, or represents uh, the weakest link uh, while the case is so uh, so engaging so relevant so dynamic and so topical uh, the teaching note is lagging behind so the purpose of this second webinar was to really um, demystify that writing of the of the teaching note that sometimes um, 
scholars and the writers of case studies find very cumbersome and complicated because uh, sometimes there is less excitement in writing the, the teaching note, but the teaching note is really essential in making sure that the case study that is being written in such an um, engaging manner achieves its learning objectives. We do not have to forget that at the end of the day, the cases are pedagogical tools, are teaching tools, and those teaching tools are designed to facilitate students' understanding of the complexity that surrounds us in this complex world, and then how this complexity can be um, simplified to make sense of this complexity, and then to take action in order to achieve the specific objectives identified for a business, which is actually highlighted in a specific case study. And then we had the third uh, webinar, uh, which linked the two previous uh, webinars um, on the case study, on the key success formulas for writing a very good and strong case study, and the teaching note with all the elements and all the comprehensive aspects included in the teaching note. And uh, we combined the two in order to make sure to uh, um, explain in more details how uh, this written case study can then be transformed into a publishable case study. So webinar number three was really focused on succeeding in the case publication process because we all ambition to have our knowledge being disseminated through those venues like um, the um, publication outlets that we do have like Emerald Emerging, Emerging Markets Case Studies Collection. So, uh, with all these webinars, we actually uh, aimed to increase the quality of the submissions to make sure that all the guiding principles and submission criteria are being complied with, so that all the cases are being um, judged from the same grounding, right? And then um, the, win, the winning case would be the one which really goes beyond those basic fundamental principles of a good case study and of a comprehensive teaching note. What I've noticed from this edition definitely is that the quality of submission did increase. I did sense even when I was judging and reading those case studies uh, which were full of interesting stories, relevant, dynamic stories, um, which were unfolding really under my eyes as I was reading those case studies. Um, I've seen that um, the, the, the writers really benefit from those webinars because all the principles which were essential, particularly in writing and engaging uh, case study were present and I could sense them. Uh, the fundamentals of a good case study, like writing always in the past tense, which we could witness quite often in the previous editions that uh, submissions did not comply with this uh, criterion, for instance, of um, past tense. Now we had this. Uh, so uh, the, the, the quality increased, the, the engagement with the basic principles really and requirements of case study also um, were complied with and this was very very nice to, to observe. Um, I was asked to really reflect on, on uh, the cases and uh, definitely in general and then to conclude with uh, what made the winning case uh, winning, why they were successful and how can this really be then transport into the next step because uh, one is to write the case, second is to enter the competition, third which is an amazing achievement to win that competition but then from winning it and publishing it yet there is another bridge uh, that you need to cross and that bridge uh, I would say it's even more sophisticated because uh, the publication once it is done it stays there forever and there is a a uh, huge prestige associated with publishing in a, in a very solid uh, a journal um, which is published by a solid uh, publisher like Emerald with a lot of years of tradition, uh, this is very prestigious. So that knowledge stays forever there and all the scholars, all the students around the world can access that knowledge. So I was reflecting about this edition. Uh, as, I, as I said, I'm doing this uh, since uh, quite a lot uh, uh, of years, um, judging uh, cases, submitting different types of competition for different uh, regions of the world. And I've been engaged in this one for a couple of years. And um, I was trying to think about what would 
unite <laughs> all those different submissions that uh, that we had in this year's um, in the last year's in 2021 edition of um, case writing competition and uh, through a lot of this uh, thinking finally the keyword that came up to my mind which was uniting all those different uh, case studies was actually diversity so let the word diversity to be the winner because i've seen that there was diversity in topics that uh, were treated in those different cases i've seen green management digital economy entrepreneurship pandemic related issues family business considerations sustainability issues purpose-driven organizations so it was really a diverse set of topics which were all topical by the way and very important for today's business world the second diversity refers to diversity of teams uh, who author the case studies. So we had authors uh, who are professors of different ranks, uh, assistant, uh, associate professors, full event. We had research assistants. We had diversified teams with multiple authors and with a re reduced number of authors. We had students who are also part of the authorship of the case studies. And this is really amazing to notice. So that students are involved not only in analyzing the case but actually conceptualizing and writing the case the third element of diversity relates to protagonists be it again the word diversity to be the winner diversity of protagonists we've seen in the case studies that were submitted for consideration we've seen younger older male female protagonists um, with less experience more experience so this is really also very important and encouraging because we can see that it can stimulate students even um, to, to be able uh, to, to launch their own businesses and to be themselves the protagonists of those future case studies. Diversity of industries that were <laughs> our companies from those cases um, operating in, like real estate, kindergarten, shoes manufacturing, communication, um, online delivery. So, so many different um, industries that were tackled in those cases. And the last diversity um, in this situation relates to diversity of countries, even with uh, um, the prevailing focus on emerging markets and emerging markets, what in the Middle East, even there we had cases uh, grounded in, in, in the companies which are located in Egypt, the United Arab Emirates and uh, Qatar. So uh, with all this reflection, actually, um, I wanted to say that the diversity is the winning word for all those different cases that we're submitting, and this is very encouraging. Second, diversity creates multidisciplinarity. And I would say innovation today really stems from this multidisciplinarity. And the more crossing, um, cross-disciplinary, and more we are crossing the boundaries from one industry to another, from one field to another, from one topic to another, the more innovative knowledge we create, and the more we contribute to the distribution of that knowledge uh, in different parts of our society. So all these allows us to then stimulate innovation, creativity, which are the most important skills that we would like to have uh, in, our, in our students, in our future uh, labor force. Um, we always thought about how to um, really um, comment on those uh, winning cases, what made them um, different and what made them to actually succeed in this year's competition. Um, this goes back again to the key fundamental principles of an engaging case study. Definitely tick the box that uh, out of all those submissions, the winning cases had a very detailed, very structured, uh, very clear um, teaching note. So teaching note that the supporting document, which wasn't the missing link, like in many other situations when it is the missing or the weakest link, because it lacks um, to provide sufficient um, really elaboration on how to use that case study, what learning objectives are being achieved, how students can address um, the different questions um, in this case study, what kind of theories really help to analyze those different questions and then achieve those objectives. So definitely they take the box for this, for structure, for relevance, for having a comprehensive set of elements which should be in a, in a good and well uh, structured teaching note. Uh, but definitely uh, a case study 
at the end of the day stands out through its topicality, through its innovativeness, through its appealing um, problem and challenge uh, that uh, puts and places students in such a really relevant situation where the student can imagine uh, themselves in uh, the shoes of the protagonist and can really materialize all those different types of, of, of problems at the same time can transpose themselves to the situations that are being lived and then eventually even come up with very meaningful and workable types of solutions. So I would always re reiterate every time, if, uh, if you remember some of the, I'm sure some of the winning authors, uh, where they had the three webinars, because as I mentioned, my reflection was that I sensed very well and very much how the authors tried to comply with those um, uh, advices that were given during those webinars. But if I were again to summarize the key principles of a very well-written case study, an engaging and a winning one, I would say you would never be missing if you remember those fundamental five Ps of relevant, engaging, dynamic case studies. And the five Ps with the sixth one which uh, I will add, to add towards the end because I would like to encourage you to then uh, have the case study, winning case study published and be there forever available to everybody else. You will see that this 6P is also equally important, not only for the authors, but particularly for the judges who judge the relevance of the case and also for the reviewers who review the case for publication. So the five Ps are definitely related to the problems that a good case should highlight, referring to the nature of dynamics within a specific company and the challenge that needs to be addressed. The second, protagonist, meaning the people, the case study should be a living organism, meaning as you read the case, you should feel the preoccupation, the challenges, the emotions that are being lived by those protagonists and decision makers in that case. Three pieces, don't forget the artistry of language, uh, the flow, the syntax, the structure of the sentences, the way how you really guide the, the, the reader through the different parts of the case and you make the person hooked to the story so that you want that person to read till then what happened in that specific case. Possibilities, do not forget that the case is typically a management related case, so uh, there should be open-ended um, um, at the end um, statement so that you would never guide and write a case study in a way that it leads to only one best way. We know that there is no one best way. It should be um, ending with an open statement where students and whoever who analyzes that case will have so many opportunities to actually come up with some multiple, actually different solutions. And all will depend on justification that they provide. And then paradigm, not to forget that we need to then ground our case study in the content that is being taught in a specific class, in a specific course, to use those different models, theories to help uh, the student analyze the specific problem. So those are the five Ps which were most evidenced in the winning cases. And the last six P, which I would say with my encouragement, very strong encouragement to those winning authors to publish the case study, the winning case study in this competition is the potential. So from winning this, we need now to go and to publish it. And if there is a potential and the reviewers see that there is a strong potential, they always give constructive feedback so that the author will have the possibility to revive the case and then successfully publish it in ideally Emerald Emerging Markets case study collection. So on my behalf, I really congratulate everyone who submitted the cases. Uh, don't be disappointed the ones who did not win <laughs> because it's part of the process. I myself participated in many of those competitions. Some I won, some I didn't, right? But being there, more you participate, more you learn, more you improve. It's a learning process and that's important. And my um, really um, big heartfelt congratulations to the ones who won. Uh, 
and I would like to encourage you to then pursue the case writing as a skill, as a competency, which will be always relevant for you uh, if you're a faculty, if you're a student, if you're a future researcher. And definitely I would like to invite everyone to submit case studies for the next edition of 2022 case writing competition. Thank you so much and again congratulations. Thank you, Virginia, so much for your lovely uh, talk. I think we can hear you talk about cases for hours and hours uh, because of your rich knowledge and your experience and passion. Um, allow me to share that Virginia actually has not been feeling very well, and yet she insisted to attend today's webinar to personally share um, her, her experience and her, light, her highlights and her takes from uh, last year's competition and to personally congratulate the winners and this is how passionate I guess you are Virginia about um, e-cases um, and now yeah. to... thank you, thank you <laughs> so much for giving me the chance to, to congratulate exactly I'm very passionate and I hope that this passion is contagious not my technical <laughs> status only my passion for case writing <laughs> thank you yeah. so much we, we can feel that in your fashion. Thank you, Virginia. Um, and now to uh, the favorite part and the part that we've all been waiting for for almost a year, uh, which is announcing the winners and celebrating the winners for 2021's competition. Now, I personally wasn't there uh, during that year, but everyone has been talking about the much of effort and the, the, the partners' efforts, uh, Dr. Virginia's efforts, everyone's in, in every case submitting one and every winner's uh, efforts. And this is something that we are celebrating specifically for, for the, the amount of effort that you've put for that year. So uh, before we start announcing, may I please ask uh, the winners to uh, open up your cameras so we can all give you a round of applause. Can everyone open their cameras, the winners? Can't see them. Nadine, would you please help us saying which buttons should the participants use to open their cameras? Maybe they're not uh, familiar with yeah. the interface. Uh, you, you, you should find on your right, I think, um, a camera button. Uh, you should find it red. If you if you click on it, it turns green. Then you are um, sharing your vi your video. Okay, maybe we can just move to announce the winners. I, but, don't, um, I don't think that participants have audio or camera. I don't think they'll be able to switch a camera on. Yeah, maybe. Okay, well, yeah. we're, we're all giving you a round of applause um, from our side, from the partner side, from all of the panelists, we're all giving you a round of applause. Now, uh, the winners are, and excuse my pronunciation because the name of the cases sound a bit complicated. So uh, the winners is the Scarabis Sacer, an iconic green brand advocating sustainability in the era of digital economy and connectivity from the American University in Cairo, Dr. Ayman Ismail, uh, Siham Ghalwash, Mohit Moria. Congratulations for each one of you for winning uh, the first place with Emerald uh, case writing competition with the AUC. The first runner-ups are the Faro Rises, Z Generation Startup PIK, also from the American University in Cairo, Rhonda El Badawi, and Mayar El Sayed. Congratulations for winning first runner-up with the uh, case writing competition. 
And the second runner ups are the pandemic, learning the way of continuous communication with customers from Galatasaray University, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, in Turkey. Uh, Nilsa Kavdar and Alev Kogak. Congratulations for winning second runner up with Emeralds and AUC case writing competition in 2021. We have actually conducted a video for all of the winners uh, where they talk about their cases, their takes, uh, and their overall highlights. And now we'll be viewing this uh, video. The video is not um, this, uh, viewing the winners in their order. So you might see them um, starting with the, with the first runner-ups. So we'll be viewing the video now.
congratulations again to all of our winners and we would like to really thank you for your efforts for your passion for what you are doing and contributing to the society to your affiliations to your countries uh, you you're doing a great job and we hope that you thrive from there on and you continue your your great work and your hard work and, and, and passion for for what you're doing and for your for your research and for your case writing activities. Again, congratulations to all of our winners. And uh, now I would like to uh, give the floor to James Hobbs, the our commissioning lead for uh, e-cases. Thank you very much. Um... Hi, my name is uh, James Hobbs. I'm the commissioning lead for cases here at Emerald. So if you do have any questions uh, for me throughout uh, my section for this webinar, please do let me know. And I'll be happy to answer them at the Q&A at the end. Uh, firstly, I'd like to um, uh, thank all of the entrants to the 2021 competition. It's fascinating to see so many case authors writing about case dilemmas from the Middle East and North Africa region. And we continue to welcome the uh, American University of Cairo's El Kazinda Business Research and Case Centre, their support of the competition as well. A hearty congratulations to all the winners as well. I echo the words of uh, Nadine um, previously. Uh, next slide, please. Oh no, it's already up, uh, there we go. Uh, we are proud to announce that the KCC competition will return in 2022 as well. It's now open to entries and we welcome uh, submissions uh, for all qualifying cases. The total prize fund is $2,250 with $1,000 to going to the winner, second place taking home $750, and third place taking home uh, $500. Emerald will be keen to support case writers in their writing too, and will announce webinars and workshops throughout the competition period to allow new and experienced authors to learn about cases, how to write them, how to hone them, and how to write a good teaching note as well. We look forward to receiving some, to, uh, some top quality cases in 2022. As a Brief reminder of what the KCC competition is. The aim of the competition is to encourage and promote cases from the MENA region and Pakistan and Turkey. These, feature in, uh, these will feature in Emerald's Emerging Markets Case Studies collection that showcases the best case studies from emerging markets regions. Uh, the deadline for the uh, submission for the competition for this year is the 30th of September. So do start considering your case study if you have not done so already. The competition is now open to entries and we look forward to seeing them. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I can share all of these links uh, with all of the attendees at this webinar um, afterwards, but just to reiterate that Emerald is here to support those looking to enter the competition again, or for any new entries uh, who maybe have not considered uh, submitting to Emerald before. Uh, the key information regarding the competition and submission criteria are hosted on, on Emerald's competitions page and the KCC landing page specifically. We have a dedicated competition page too from where you'll be able to submit your case for this year. This includes all the submission information and author guidelines so you can review your case against the submission criteria. Uh, the Cases Hub is also a great place to start if you're beginning to write case studies for the first time. Uh, there are training modules on writing cases, preparing a teaching note, uh, videos from our editors explaining hints and tips to improve your cases and common Q&As uh, regarding the whole process. Uh, we really do recommend checking this out. Um, uh, there are no obligations to go through every single module that's up there because there's, there's so many, but um, and you can save and exit at any time, but please do check out the resources there. They're sure to improve your case writing as you go. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, so a final thanks to everyone who submitted a case and supported the KCC competition in their own way last year. It could not have been done without you, and this webinar is a means of saying thank you. Congratulations to all of our winners, and we do hope that their cases are useful and inspiring in classrooms all over the world, and have inspired you to submit your own case to the 2022 competition. Uh, I wish you all well for a prosperous 2022, and look forward to doing this all again in a year from now. Um, I think that more or less brings our uh, webinar to a close, so if there is any questions, uh, I'm sure we'll be pleased to answer them. Thank you, James, for launching the new competition for 2022. Um, I'm checking now the questions, but 
I can see questions related to the competition. I'm sorry, everyone, I thought that the option to share videos was there because I see all the questions related to accessing the video for the winners. But I guess if you have any questions, feel free to share them with us. Uh, we'll be the uh, the recordings for the session. And I would like to thank everyone who has attended with us our webinar. I see attendance from Egypt, from Bahrain, from India, from Turkey. Thank you, everyone. And please do not hesitate to get in touch with us if you have any follow-up questions.